Hi, Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts. Father, we ask you to bless this message and this lesson in the name of Jesus. We're going to talk about the Holy Spirit, especially for those of you who are considering giving your hearts to the Lord or have recently done so. And may some of you may not even understand the whole thing. So we're going to break it down very simply for the sake of time. And we will get back into it throughout the week so that you really, really get an in-depth view of how the Holy Spirit works and why we need him. Okay. Luke chapter 24, verse 49. Okay. One verse. And behold... I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye, tarry means to wait, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye have been endued with power from on high. And that power comes from the Holy Spirit. They are to wait in the upper room for the coming of the Holy Spirit, for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay, listen to this. Um, the baptism of the Holy Spirit gives us a new nature, gives us power, gives us insight, revelation. I mean, a whole lot of stuff comes with that package. So, And God wanted us to be equipped. All right. Luke chapter 1, verse 67. And his father, this is what the Holy Spirit does. Three main things. His father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied. And then it goes into the next verse. Listen, one of the things when you know you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you will prophesy from time to time. It may only happen once or twice in your life, but that's one of the indications that you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Now we're dealing with the gifts of the Holy Spirit right now. All right. Number two. This is gift number two. I'm just mainly t touching on three obvious gifts because they come through the mouth. Here we go. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. Check this out. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Mm -hmm. that's another gift now some churches believe that is the evidence no, the Holy Spirit has a number of gifts and if you're filled with any of those gifts and they're operating they can't do it without the Holy Spirit you're filled okay, here we go now, other, other tongues it's either another language or heavenly language but either way that's a supernatural act and you need the Holy Spirit to do that. Okay, here we go. Here's another one. Now, so we've done so far prophecy, you know, prophesying, and speaking in other tongues. Here we go. Acts chapter 4, verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. Okay. One of the things that you will see if a person is up in the pulpit preaching or wherever, one of the uh, characteristics is boldness. They're not speaking all timid, and, uh, well, um, and then we're going to, uh, and then the Lord wants us to, and the Lord doesn't want you to, uh, uh, no, boldness, baby. I'm not talking about busting somebody's eardrums with volume, boldness. You can be bold as a lion and whisper tenderly, softly, but still be bold with your truth. All right. Now, what did they do? Number three, they spoke the word with boldness. So you've got the Holy Spirit helps you to prophesy, speak in tongues, 
and speak God's word with boldness. All right. <laughs> Getting a little insight here? Now, this is one of the things I love about the Holy Spirit, too. Number two. This is, uh, sorry, number two. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Oh, I love that divine nature, y'all. Listen. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lusts. Listen. The divine nature is what happens to us because if, there is no way we can live for God with our old nature. The way we are, you don't have to tell a baby to tell a lie. Nobody has to teach him. He doesn't have to go to school or, or go to college for that. He starts out telling lies. Babies know how to manipulate. Wow, wow, wow. Throw temper tantrums. Where did that come from? It's in our nature. Do you hear what I mean? Okay, so knowing that doing wrong is part of our nature, we need a new nature in order to have a total 300, uh, 180 degree turn. So if you're facing this way, you're doing about face. That's a 180 degree turn. That's a U-turn, you guys. You go in a complete, you're going this way, you do a U-turn and you go this way. Why? Because you can't keep going the same way with your old nature and please God. It's just not going to happen. You know why? Because God is holy. And God's holiness will not cohabit with our sinfulness. Okay, we're not going to get too deep into that. But I just want you to understand why we need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives us revelation. He will reveal. Listen, when I first got saved, I was reading that Bible and I was shocked that it had been English all that time. I mean, all the times I tried to read it before I was saved, I thought I was reading Greek. It just didn't make any sense. But when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, and you ask God, Lord, give me understanding, it's the Holy Spirit that opens your eyes and gives you understanding where your mind really can make sense out of that. And once the Holy Spirit began to do that for me, I fell in love with the King James because I realized just how poetic it really was. And some of the terminology says things in ways that no other interpretation can be. You know how some people listen. You know how some people say, you know, you can't tell. That these are unsafe folks, right? Yeah. You can't tell a person off without cussing them out real good. It's just something about cussing them out that really puts that, that, that seasoning on your words. Well, that's the way they feel. Well, I feel that way about reading God's Word. The Holy Spirit gives me such an understanding of the King James that when I read the King James Version, it's like, Whoa, baby, there is no other interpretation that can season that and say it like that and put those zingies in there. It just, something about the way it's spoken says it. There's a, a, a funny scripture, I always it always tickles me. Some people are like uh, the waves of the ocean or the waves of the sea. I'm just kind of halfway paraphrasing because this is what the King James says. All they do is stir up mire and dirt. It's just, oh, it kind of tells you about yourself. <laughs> and it does it with a little pop. But anyway, moving right along. That's what I love about the Holy Spirit. He helps me understand what I'm reading and the implications. Here's another one. Revelation I got when I first got saved. 
I would say maybe two or three months after, yeah, two or three months after I got saved. And trust me, you guys, I wasn't raised in church. I was in the streets. My family, we were all heathens <laughs> who cussed like sailors, okay, and smoked like chimneys, moving right along. So what I ended up doing was I was reading a, a, a segment in Genesis. I was reading about how the Lord had, um, I want to get it straight. The Lord, had, no, it was in Exodus. The Lord had told Moses, remember uh, when God was judging the Israelites and the Lord had told Moses to, uh, Moses went to God, oh Lord, you got to save, you got to save the people. They're dying from these fiery serpents. Well, that was one of God's judgments. He sent fiery serpents basically venomous serpents to bite them so they would get sick unto death. Okay. I don't need those anymore. So what ended up happening was they're dying now. I mean, they're getting bitten and they're dying. They can't get away from these slithery things. And Moses, of course, intercedes. He stands in the gap. He, he, he oh God, you've got to help these people. You can't let them die like this. And he goes on his spiel and his, he cops his plea. So what God does is God says, okay, you want them to be saved. You want them to be delivered. You want them to be healed and, and, and kept alive. Well, okay, you, do. I'll tell you what to do. You get a, pole and you make a brass serpent and plant that suck on the top of the pole and plant the pole on top of a hill and tell all those nitwits and everybody that looks up at that serpent the brass serpent will be healed and saved alive from the venomous deadly bites of the fiery serpents. Okay, here I go. I'm talking to God. I want to tell you how real God is. He, he's, he's not uh, bothered by us questioning him. Like people say, uh, you know, don't you, if I tell you, don't, don't you question me. Guess what? God's okay with it because he doesn't have an ego problem. Okay. So I sat there and I said, Lord, that really doesn't make sense to me. Why would you have, you got all these people dying from slithery, nasty looking snakes. And the only way they can live, they got to look at another snake. What sense does that make? No, Lord, and I'm reading the scripture and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And thus saith the Lord to Moses. Blah, and I'm sitting up there saying, oh, Lord, does that make sense to you? I mean, oh, seriously. I was going with the Lord with that one. I was debating. It just made no sense to me. I said, Lord, why didn't you make a brass angel, something pretty to look at, a rose, a, uh, a sunset? I mean, something pretty. Why would you make them look? I mean, why would you duplicate the thing that's killing them? After about 15 or 20 minutes of literally going round and round that mountain over and over and over again, the Lord through the move of his Holy Spirit, gave me a split-second, instantaneous revelation, crystal clear. It was so crystal clear and so shocking, it made me cry. It actually, it, it's moving when the Holy Spirit gives you a revelation because it's, it lets you know how connected you are with God. And that in and of itself is humbling and moving. And yeah, and I'm a crybaby, so yeah, I cried. So what happened was, what the Lord showed me in that split second, and he broke it down too, like, you know, you dealing with an idiot, and he broke it down like that too. The snake that was made of brass hadn't bitten anybody. Yet, it resembled the very snakes that were killing them. They had to look at the snake that had bitten nobody, had harmed nobody, didn't have any venom in his fangs. It was all brass. 
in order for them to be healed from the deadly bites of the fiery serpents. So he made the snake resemble the very thing that was killing him. Jesus came in the form of sinful flesh who had committed no sin, harmed nobody. And these people had to look up on him crucified on the cross in order to be forgiven, delivered, healed, and revived from their sins that were killing them. Gave them power. Jesus had the power over the grave and over sin and death. I am telling you, Jesus was the representation. That was who that serpent represented, was Jesus Christ. Sinless. The way the serpent was their salvation is the way Jesus is our salvation. Now, that revelation came through the Holy Spirit. And yes, I double checked because it was just so amazing. I just had to make sure that I was right. I was only three months old in the Lord. So I called my pastor and I said, Pastor uh, Cushman, tell me, is this true? Because this is what I got. And it's so moving. It's like, it's, it's like a supernatural revelation. And he said, you got that from asking God? And I said, yeah. And he said, Patty, people go to seminary to learn that kind of stuff. <laughs> I'm telling you, you guys. If you really want to know something, if you really want to understand something, if you really want to understand yourself, life, human nature, the Holy Spirit is the best teacher you can have. Oh, I'm not going to get emotional. There's so much the Holy Spirit has done in my life, including inner healing and deliverance from a root of rejection. You cannot leave home without him. I'm telling you. You ask God to fill you with his Holy Spirit and ask him to bring on everything his Holy Spirit packs because he's, he's packing a wallet and you don't want to do without anything that you don't have to. Be filled with the Holy Spirit, you guys. We'll talk further because you need to know all of the supernatural side of the Holy Spirit as well. You also need to learn about the fruits of the Holy Spirit. That's from the new nature, that divine nature. And that divine nature is described in Galatians chapter 5, which describes the works of the Spirit characteristics of God. We're going to stop here. God bless you. We'll continue later.